Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. As promised in the last video, we're gonna go take a look at two more ponds. It's a weekend morning. I've got Alana and AJ with me. It's been a while since you guys have seen this little guy. He is 16 months old right now. He's uh, walking, he's talking, kind of talking. He's got about a dozen or so words that he says. Um, let's see, car, go, yes. Uh, sit, he, He'll say sit, because he likes to tell the dogs to sit. He says eat a lot because he's he's a good eater. He's gonna be a, a big kid, I think. But a lot of people have been asking in the comments below what are the wife's thoughts on the pond. So go ahead and tell them your thoughts. And don't tell them what you think I wanna hear. Tell them what you actually think about the pond. So as you guys know, he has a lot of ideas. Um, <laughs> this was one idea that I wasn't quite sure at first. I was a little skeptical. Uh, but as we have been looking at other ponds and have been really talking about it and I've been watching other videos on YouTube, um, the idea is really starting to grow on me. I think it would be a good addition to the property. Plus, all the ponds that we went to go look at the other day were pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, and they if, were nice. if we put something in like that, I, I think it would be a nice thing to have here, especially as he gets a little bit older. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's her biggest concern is the safety of the pond and making sure that he doesn't just walk into it one day. Yes. Um, the pond is going to be outside of our fenced in area where he's going to be playing most of the time. But, you know, as he gets older and starts to get outside the fence, it's going to be for a couple years, a safety issue we're gonna have to keep an eye on, but I think it's it will be able to manage that. So yeah. I, I think that having him grow up with a pond in the winter time, you know, ice skating on and stuff, and then in the summertime being able to go down there and fish, I think it's just a great way for a kid to grow up. So I'm really looking forward to it. I think you're starting to come around on it as well. Yes. But anyway, let's go ahead and hop in the truck and we're gonna go take a look at two more ponds. The first one we're gonna go look at today is a five and a half acre pond, way bigger than what we're looking at putting in. We're looking at doing about a half acre to three quarter acre, but uh, I still think it's good to get a variety to you know, see what you wanna do and maybe there'll be some things in this pond that we wanna add to ours as well. So anyway, let's hop in the truck and go see it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got over here at uh, my parents' relative's house and uh, this is the five and a half or six acre pond, right Mark? Yeah, a little over six. A little over six acres. This is, I mean, actually seeing it in person, this is almost like a lake. Have you ever had any uh, power power boats out here or jet skis or anything like that? Yeah, we used to put a boat on there that had a, a motor large enough we could pull the kids tubing when they were little. I can't imagine tubing on your own property. That's uh, that's pretty fun. cool. So what what are some things that we should be considering with putting a pond in? I mean, what what's your average depth on this? And um, you know, any good ideas for building the dam and the standpipe and all the, all those kinds of things you need to consider. Well, we have uh, yeah, a standpipe. We don't have a spillway on this pond. And it's always worked good because it's strictly kept full by the runoff. And uh, yeah, that worked well for us. It really, I think, depends on the location and how much water you have coming into it. I know we have a low spot on our dam in case it ever got so much water that it's kind of an emergency overflow. So it yeah. cut off that corner instead of breaching the dam so, so in, in our last video we were talking about a half acre to one acre ponds that we were looking at and how they were all spring fed and how that really helps keep the the water clean and clear but for a pond that's over six acres you've got to have some ground runoff to keep it full otherwise you'd be losing so much to evaporation so yeah ours does evaporate down in most summers it's full now all the rain we've had and so, what'd you what'd you say if we get a dry summer how much will the water level drop on oh, this? oh anywhere from probably a foot to two feet it'll be down two feet and, down yeah but you were saying that even if it does drop down two feet, that your banks with all the, the mud and everything you've got on them, you'll start to get grass to grow. So it yeah, happens it, so slowly, you don't... Right, it starts to green up and most people are surprised. You know, if I tell them it's down that much, it doesn't look like it. It's it's not like out west in Lake Mead. Yeah, the only problem that we have when it goes down low like that is uh, on the end of the left here, it's a little bit shallower and some of the top soil didn't get all stripped off of there. and the weeds will grow there more and as the water drops down it gets down to the level of what the weeds are but you know not a not a problem this year have you okay All 
right, so we just stopped up here next to the pavilion and they've got kind of a little peninsula that pokes out here where they have their pavilion. That's really nice. So Mark, how deep did you say this pond is? Uh, it's 15 feet. That's, uh, you're allowed to have the water, the dam retain 15 feet of water. 15. You can dig it a little bit deeper out in the foot of it, which we did out in one spot, but yeah, it's basically 15 feet deep. And how long have you had this pond in? About 25 years. Okay, so if anything would have gone wrong with it by now, you would have you would have known about it by yeah, now. <laughs> yeah. That's good. You said a little over six acres. I can't imagine the amount of equipment that you had to have in here to dig this out. What what types of equipment did you have in here? Did you do the work or you had somebody do the work? Oh, well, we, we had someone do the work. Yeah. Uh, it was actually a relative of ours and a relative of yours. Yeah. Uh, that are passed away now, but yeah, they had a gravel bank here in Conneaut Lake. And uh, yeah, they had all their equipment here. They had a big excavator, two big track loaders, which they ran like bulldozers. And I forget how many of their gravel trucks from up there. I think there was four gravel trucks they had running. And I had a small uh, Caterpillar track loader at the time. So it was all we could do to keep up with them moving the dirt. But it was put in over two years. They did had a little bit more than half the dam built the first year and wanted it to go through. A winter settling they tracked it in good and through the the frost and thaw and then through the next summer and then basically finished it up in the fall then let it go into the third year and then come back and did the final grading around it that so i guess really three years two years of getting the dam in and then the third year it was final graded where we could plant the grass around it and so how long did it take to fill in well it was you know half full after the first year because that's all they wanted it to fill uh, okay and then finished filling after we put the rest of the pipe in, it finished filling that second year. Yeah, I think if we would have started empty, uh, it probably, I don't know if it would have filled through that first winter right. or not, but uh, you know, depending on how much snow pack you get and so forth. So Mark has an interesting story. As we talked about, this pond is about 15 feet deep. And uh, I said, so do you ice skate or anything like that when, when the kids were younger? And you said? Well, I'd say interesting and maybe embarrassing. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> A victim of circumstances so we had out here a, a good size skating rink that would keep cleared off for uh, for the kids for skating once the ice got thick enough and it was during one of the cold winters in the end of february and that ice it was thick out there and so we had no problem you know running the tractor out here where you see this little paddle boat turned upside down this water's i don't know it's maybe six or seven feet deep right out in there as the end of february just got through like uh you know, a stretch of weather that was zero or below. Right. And a weekend coming up and the kids said they wanted to skate. So we had that little, uh, you know, a little four wheel drive Kubota tractor and I'd put across the loader bucket, uh, like a two by 10 on it and use that to push snow. It did a really nice job. Went out there, cleared the rink off that we had been skating on all winter long come back in the exact same tire tracks and it felt like I rolled the tire on the the back tire on the tractor I looked down and saw water and knew that the tractor was going in and <laughs> it, as quick as I could shut the key off jump up on the seat step on the hood and step on the ice as it was going under the tractor was gone <laughs> and you said it was in six or seven foot of water and you said the roll bar the, 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 the roll bar on it was just under maybe about a foot so oh. I could get out there on the ice and get a chain on that roll bar. And you said the ice was 16 inches thick, it was but- 16 inches thick getting out there. We have a relative, another relative that had a big excavator that actually had to have a permit to move it that was in town. They brought it over. And I mean, he hammered and hammered on that ice to, to get out close enough where we could get a chain on that tractor. And, and you know, he was able to just lift it up and then carry it out of there. It looked like a toy compared to that excavator. But right. yeah, they couldn't believe it. We measured it with a tape measure. It was 16 inches thick, but right where that tractor went through, there must have been a little spring or, you know, methane gas or something coming up out of there. Yeah, the ice was kind of crystally and it was only maybe three or five inches thick right there where that tractor went through. And I, I've done my research on ice thickness and they say, for just skating on you want to make sure you have at least three or four inches you know for body weight let alone a three or four thousand pound tractor so yeah, yeah it makes sense you went through but man I'm, I'm glad i'm glad there was no damage done and nobody got hurt now have you taken anything out to plow snow on no, the ice that gave me a new appreciation for the ice <laughs>
Yeah, yeah I've been no, nothing uh, heavier than uh, probably me walking or a four wheeler out there. I was thinking about, you know, if we get, you know, maybe 10 inches ice taking the four wheeler side by side out there to plow it off for skating this winter, but. Yeah, that that's definitely gonna make me think twice about making sure I go out there and measure measure I the mean, ice. That's what we, you know, that's what we would would normally use. But by the end of winter, that ice it it would get thick. You know, I mean, we wouldn't take it out when it was questionable, and it wasn't right. a heavy tractor. It was a smaller tractor. The, the tires weren't loaded. You know, I don't know what it weighed, but it wasn't wasn't that heavy. It was a it was a surprise. I'll say that for that to go through. Yeah, that's that's. And then just the timing of it, I was able to just step up on the hood and step off on the solid ice, and, <laughs> and didn't even get my feet wet. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely a, a good story to tell. Now, what about fish and wildlife? I know you said that you stalked this a little bit, right? Yes, we uh, to start out, uh, I bought a bunch of fathead minnows uh, from a wholesaler and put them in and let them in here for a year you have to have enough brush in the water uh, i read they lay their eggs they put them stick them upside down on something like branches and that sort of thing which we have stumps and a couple of felled trees that we left out there for uh for structure for fish and so that first year we've had those minnows and by the end of the fall i mean you could walk around this pond and there were thousands of fathead minnows in there it was yeah unbelievable i guess they lay eggs every seven or ten days once the water gets to a certain temperature and there's nothing in there to eat them so. right and so you said that the the first year you kind of let them the yep, fathead meadows get established yeah and then the next year i just you know got some uh you know bluegills and bass and uh you know brought them home and put them in there and they've They've got, I was going to say, they've got a, an all-you-can-eat buffet of fathead yes. minnows in here. Yes, yeah. So you just slowly start to build your ecosystem in the pond. Yes. Now, what about other uh, wildlife that you have around the pond? I mean, I'd imagine deer and birds and waterfowl. Yeah, and waterfowl coming in and out. We always have uh, you know, a pair of geese nests on the island here every year. We always have osprey coming over, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, they're here almost every day, You know, a couple of times a day you'll see them diving into the water to get fish and now what about uh like beavers or muskrats or do you have any uh wildlife that causes you headaches or problems out here uh, we got you know problems with muskrats and then oh there's always a concern about groundhogs digging into the back of the dam and the muskrat uh you know with the muskrats you have to wait till trapping season right and uh you have a nephew that does some trapping so he'll he's more than glad to come up and try to take care of them for us if we yeah some and keep your uh, dam from getting completely yeah. tore up. Yeah. I think you were saying the muskrats dig from the water side and the groundhogs dig from the... Uh... The dry side, you hope they never meet in the middle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when our kids were little, out here by the picnic shelter, we kept that all sand like a beach. And uh, we had a long dock that went out and it was uh, like a water playground. We had a old pontoon boat with nothing on it. All the stuff stripped off. We had a slide on that and a diving board. and. And we had a big water trampoline out there and oh my gosh that sounds yeah, amazing yeah. that's what i'm hoping you know we've got anderson now and hopefully we'll have you know another couple of kids and have all their friends come over to the pond and it just sounds like a great place to grow up and have and raise a family oh, our kids were in it every day i mean we had you know initially thought about putting a pool in and after we put the pond and they were in here every day yeah i mean it, it was something as soon as they could get in it they were always down here with their friends and stuff we had a lot of fun down here all right well awesome you have a beautiful pond here and uh I, i'm once we get ours in i definitely still want to come back out here i want to see you put a boat in this water all right well thanks mark i appreciate it all right so we're here at uh, dave and dolores's pond and this is a little bit different from the one we were just at obviously the last one was a little over six acres and this one's a little over a tenth of an acre but the same gentleman who dug the last one dug this one as well. It was actually a family relative of ours uh, dug both of these. But uh, this is Dave here. Dave, tell us a little bit about this pond. Well, it's spring fed. Uh, there's springs coming in from the bottom and the top. And uh, it's uh, somewhere between 15 and 18 feet deep. Okay. And, uh, and it's all shale rock all the way down. It was completely shale, just like a shale pit. So you don't have a whole lot of problems with weeds and things like that no, growing up from the just, bottom? It's, uh, the only silt that's in it now is in the bottom, you know, from, from over a period of time. And now, I think Dolores was saying you guys used to dye this pond, but you don't anymore? I don't put that blue dye in there because uh, the guy said it kills the plankton. 
And then oh. the fish don't have nothing to eat. Okay. I, I did put some kind of cleaner in there that the, it don't work because of too much flow in this pond. Your springs are so strong that you actually yeah. have water continuously yeah. moving through now here. That stuff that's in the container there is what you spray on top of the water and it'll make the, the dirt settle to the bottom. Okay. Uh, but it's like $40 a gallon and you got to <laughs> treat it every month. And I don't know how she talked me into that anyway. <laughs> But anyway, the blue dye looks nice in there. It keeps it clean, uh, but it's hard on the fish food. You know, okay. You know, have not eat them. Now, how long did it take you guys to dig this? We did, dug it one day. Dug it in one. Now, did you help dig this, or? Well, he had two machines there. He had a track hoe and a bulldozer. Okay. And uh, it was naturally sloped like that. And there's a creek. You see the creek down below it? Uh, it's about 15 feet lower than the top of that pond, and. I used to have an overflow pipe in there, a six inch pipe, and the water would just run in, go out, and go out. Okay. But I did away with that pipe because a buddy of mine broke it when he was in there with the track hoe again. And, and, and the only way I can fix it is to drain the pond completely out and fix it and put it and it'll fill up again. Uh, you used to drain this yeah. every, every year? Well, not every, about every three years. Every three years. But you want to, and then that kills everything that's in there, you know, and then you start over new. So if you ever want to change the ecosystem in the pond, you've got to have a way to drain it and start over. Yeah, it's nice to let it set all winter and that'll kill all the bugs and whatever and get rid of start all over new again. In the spring. Yeah, and then that, that'll also flush all the, the, the silt out. Right. You know how Connie Lake gets a little shower every year? Okay. Well, I help that. <laughs> <laughs> how long does it take for this pond to fill up? 13 days without any rain. 18 feet deep, yeah. and it takes 13 days 13 to fill it days back up. It full. You've got some strong springs here then. Yeah. Now, you said when, when you were digging this, uh, Jack almost got caught in the pond with his bulldozer. Uh, see, it was shale rock all the way down, which shale just turns the uh, clay or like mud or you know when you keep breaking it up and then when he got down there in the bottom he broke through into the quicksand yeah it, it almost swallowed his machine and you said he had a d4 dozer yeah i think it was a d4 or five d4 or five and then he had a uh, i think a 120 cat uh, track hoe yep and uh and um how did he get that machine back up out of well the and luckily when he seen what was happening I was standing here watching him. He just kept pouring the coal to it, and the tracks finally caught the rock and jumped up on top. And he said, "I'm done." <laughs> <laughs> I drove it right up out of there, and that was it. <laughs> and Jack, you know, Jack and them guys, they was always good to me. He dug that pine for nine hundred dollars. Wow. And uh, he dug the one across the street for nothing. He brought two machines up, and me and Chester Levito dug that one. Yeah. But I was always good to Jack and Bob yeah. and Virgil. Yeah. And and they was good to me. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Yeah, and that's why I miss them guys, you know. I know. Every, I know. every time I drive by there. Well, this is a beautiful backyard for sure, Dave. Yeah, I like it here. Very peaceful. So this is all spring water coming in here. This isn't a, you don't have a pump or anything powering a fountain that's... Uh, no, well, I'll, I'll, if I unplug that, you'll be able to see the, the natural spring coming in. Okay, so there is a little bit of water recirculation going yeah, on see, there. Yeah, see there's a pump in there pumping that up there. Okay. So I'll unplug that. And then when that quits, you'll see the natural spring coming. So this is, we're now at the point that's, where... That's pretty well the spring right there. That's all spring. So the yeah. pump is turned off and this is just the natural flow of the spring. That is a lot of spring water coming pretty quick. I gotta tell you a little story, but I bought a brand new eight thousand dollar lawnmower. Just got it. Yeah. One of them zero turns. Yep. And I never drove one before. And I come around. I started the engine up, and I come around there, and I was right there in that low spot. And I put the mower in gear, and all of a sudden it starts sliding toward the pond. <laughs> so the next thing I know, the two wheels was getting ready to drop into the pond. So I took the mower out of gear, and I and I threw it in reverse, but all it did is spin. Yep. And then I figured, you know, this thing's going to go in that pond. So I shut the engine off. And then I, uh, when I opened up the arms, it was freewheeling then, you know. Then it really started toward the pond. Yeah. So I jumped off and I got my back up against the front wheel and it started shoving me in. Okay. I hollered for Dolores. She come down, but she got here too late and I had to let it go. And it ended up 
right out there in the middle. Oh boy. Nothing but bubbles coming out. <laughs> so I called my brother-in-law, Brian, and uh, luckily I had my backhoe here, and we, we got it out and dried it all out and changed the oils in it twice and it's still running. Yep. Never heard it. But That's... if it had been running, if the engine would have been running when it went in, it would junked it. See, I don't know if you're going to be able to see the bottom, but you might be able to. Oh yeah, I can see it down there. There's a white pipe someplace down there. I can see the creek bottom down there. Okay, well that's that's how deep that pond is. Yeah, this is this is a pretty tall dam. Yeah. And it's it's pretty wide. But there's a a white pipe in it and that pipe comes right through here someplace and it's it's right down in there in the bottom. If you could put your ski mask on and go down there and pull that plug <laughs> off, I could drain the pond. Yeah. Other than that I gotta drain it to get to it. Yeah. You gotta have a deer feeder when you get this all done. <laughs> yeah. Here's a deer feeder. You just put your put your corn in there and the deer stands here and licks it out. Put a trail camera up, keep an eye on things. As that water comes in, it goes out this pipe over into here. You you gotta have something like that. If you don't it come right out and go over the dam. Right. I I uh I had this turned up too high one time. And it started going over the dam behind that tree and started washing the dam out. Yeah, that's not good. Some of them flash floods you get. Well, this is this is interesting because all the ones that I've seen so far, you've got a standpipe and then it goes down to a 90 and then through the bottom of the dam. This one you've got just it's going on through the on the top of the dam. But I do have one on the bottom, but we got to get it fixed. Right. You so, gotta, so you, you could drain it. Down in there with your dive suit. <laughs> and, uh, You're welcome back anytime, Adam, with that dive suit. Now here's another thing you can do, I'll show you up here. Where your standpipe is, you'll have a T at the bottom. Right. And then uh, you'll put a fern co on this into the T, and then this other pipe goes out under the pond, and then the standpipe's the one that's letting the water go over. But if you ever want to drain your pond, all you've got to do is pull up, a, you take a chain and hook it to this, and then you hook it up on top of your pipe. And if you ever want to drain the pond, just Pick, pick this up. That is clever. That's what I was wondering is you were talking about draining it every yeah. couple years What would you use that, to that do worked it? Good. It works good on air But you got to be awful careful that it seals uh, Otherwise you'll be leaking. Yeah, because it'll leak for a while, but then the pressure will get it to where it won't leak Well, yeah, especially if you've got 10 15 foot of water sitting on top of that There's gonna be quite a bit of yeah. pressure holding yeah, that what down. What these things are for is uh, uh, where the big uh, gas company fuel tanks are they got a pit pit around all the tanks. Yeah. And then they got a drain like this to drain the water out of the pits. Now here's another thing you can put down in there, something like that. You can dive down there and open the valve up. I'm trying to do something that you could open from the surface or yeah, from the deck. Yeah, I don't blame you, but this one here you can drive down and get wet. <laughs> So I asked Mark before we uh, wrapped up at his pond if there was anything he'd do differently or if he's got any advice uh, for somebody that's getting ready to dig a pond here another couple weeks. What do you got for me? I just pick some good dry weather because you want to get her done because once the mud gets you, you're done. Yeah. Machines don't operate good in the mud. So start and uh, start get it wrapped and finish, up yeah. as quick as possible. Yeah, get big enough equipment in there even if it costs a little more. And, and uh we've got a cat 312 coming which is a thirty thousand pound excavator and then in, instead of a bulldozer we've got a skid steer just to help move the dirt once okay. once we get it dug out but uh that's what we've got coming two pieces of equipment but you have a natural slope like that we do we have a natural uh you know valley that's already in so we just kind of we need to dig it down probably another five feet or so and then we need to build the dam yeah that's you, you can have that done in no time yeah i really like what you did with the stairs here that you can just walk right down into the pond and you said it's it's pretty deep there you, you could gotta, dive you off dive right off there huh you want to dive shallow you know right yeah if you're going to put a, a cement ring around the pipe where, where it's under the dam you want to put it somewhere out near the middle or closer to the pond but you don't want to do it right close to either end you want to do it out in the middle I think they, they call them an anti seep collar right yeah but you just want to get some bags of sack crate and you want to uh, get two pieces of a plywood and and uh, you'll have to put like half up on underneath and half down the top you know cut a half moon slot yep so you know, when you get this one underneath because you want about a six inch ring and uh, do it right where there's a collar on your plastic pipe you know where they're hooked together yep and then go maybe six inches wide or whatever. You don't need to go very wide. 
and then you want to have at least a six inch ring around it solid cement yep you know, on the bottom the top and, and you want and if you're going to have a pretty pretty deep dam you might want to put two of them on there okay because if you don't that water will go right down that pipe right It'll just follow that pipe, no matter, you can't stop it without that ring. Not even, no matter how much clay you've got. You know, you know, it'll, it'll follow that right out. And you want to, uh, if they're doing it, tamp that area real good. You've got to let your cement dry, you know. Right, before you the bury the dam. Ahead of time or whatever. And then let it get good and dry and even tamp some good clay around it. And then you'll be good because if, if uh, uh, the Jack never gave me a chance to put a cement ring on this one. He just, you know how Jack, he just go, go, go. And, so it wants to seep out of the around that pipe all the time. Yeah. And I can't stop it. And then when you get all done with it, then you uh, uh, then you got to dress the top up. Right. Know? And get it seated quick. You, you got to have a you got to like, you got to have like a transit. Mm -hmm. Set a transit up, and the, as the guy goes around there tamping it down, because you want it nice and level. Right. And, uh, and you can't really do that at the same time. You got to come back in a little later and do it. Maybe you can do it if you, if it's good and dry. You can do it all at once. Right. And uh, grass will grow on anything, so if you've you got clay or what, it'll grow. Put fertilizer and stuff on the grass seed and it'll grow. Yeah. Because this that whole dam is almost all shale rock, because so that's all that was in here was rock. Well, Dave, this was uh, some really good information. I'm, I'm really appreciative of you taking the time to show me your pond and giving me some pointers for getting ready to dig ours. Okay, I'll have to come down and see it when you get fired up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stop down. We've got the equipment for seven days. All right, so that was another two ponds that we got to go look at today. One way bigger than what we're planning on putting in and one way smaller. But that brings us to a total of five ponds that we've gone and looked at before we get started on digging our pond. And that's my biggest advice to you guys. If, if there's a project you guys have planned, chances are there's a ton of other people who have already done it. Get out there, talk to people, pick their brains on what they did that they liked, what they did that they didn't like that they wish they could do over again. But that's my biggest advice. Do your due diligence before you get started on any project like this. That way you'll be happy with the results when it's over. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video and the last one, give us a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.